10 random magic cards rated day number 71. Haven't put anything on my buy list in a while. Will today be the day? Happy Tuesday, everybody. Let's see what the first card is. Arboreal Grazer. Pretty good card, right? Printed in, originally in War of the Spark. A single green mana for a 0-3 beast with reach. When it enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. Everyone underestimated it when it first came out, but it turned out that Grazer was such a, a good magic good magic card, Bubba. <laughs> this is good with landfall effects, obviously, but in standard, it was a wall of roots. You know, one mana, 0-3. In this case... Extra gravy from Roll of Roots. It has reach, too. Um, it just ramped you on turn one. Land ramp. You know, that's in some ways better, in a lot of ways, better than Lana War Elves. Usually requires a fairly high land count, and that extra land on turn one doesn't guarantee you an extra land on turn four or anything like that. But for a lot of decks, this was an incredible magic card. And there are still, I hear legend, <laughs> some people you know on this card in certain formats. So... I like Grazer, dude. I'm going to give this a 5.3. I think it's a very good magic card, but obviously more of a role player than anything else. We'll move on to Minamo Sightbender, printed in Betrayers of Kamigawa, but also dual decks. Vincer versus Koth. This is two mana. One in a blue for a 1-2 human wizard. You can pay X and tap it, and target creature with power X or less is unblockable this turn. It's actually kind of neat. <laughs> I don't... I played in Betrayers, and I don't remember you <laughs> like at all. I guess that means it just wasn't good in Standard. Back then when cards weren't good in Standard or Modern or whatever, um, Extended. <laughs> but I think we I think we had Modern. No, we didn't. <laughs> yes, we. I think we did, actually. I think we did have Modern. Kind of fuzzy on my memory of this like particular time in Magic history, but we had other formats. <laughs> but back then, if a card didn't see play in a constructed 1v1 format... It kind of got lost to time in some ways, you know. So this is one of those cards. This is actually okay, though. This is actually okay, you know. Creatures with combat damage, you know, abilities that trigger on combat damage um, and stuff like that. And just like huge dudes, you know, like they don't have to be necessarily huge. You know, you pay like four mana and get a four, four through and excuse me. And that could really, really matter. So. No, I, I think this is actually a neat little dude with a mana sync ability and stuff. I don't know. I like him. He's a 4.9. I'll give him a 4.9. He's probably got like some extreme applications. Like I bet this dude has use cases that are bonkers, but I'll move on to Morbid Opportunist. Good card here. Printed in Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Three mana. Ooh, it's only 47 cents. It used to be like $1.50 for, for a uh, Morbid Opportunist, but now you can get one from Bloomberg Commander for 40 cents. That's pretty sick, dude. That's okay. Is there ever one with like different art except for Fallout? No, not really. I guess double feature is still like a buck, but that's cool. Anyway, this is, in case you don't know, this is three mana, two and a black for a one, three human rogue. Whenever one or more creatures die, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. So, boo, I guess, on that. There are cards like Midnight Reaper and other cards. You know, Undead Augur, I guess, if you're playing zombies. Um, there's another one I'm missing. Uh, you'll tell me in the comment section. It's like, Hex... Something anyway, I, <laughs> there's a there's a few effects in black like this, and a lot of them don't trigger only once each turn. But morbid opportunist turns out is still a welcome addition to a lot of like commander sacrifice decks. And I've got it in Dina, I've got it in Judith, I've got it in Ellis Core, but I've only got one copy, which is kind of why I'm interested in ordering more, so I don't have to keep resleeving and unsleeving and resleeving. But yeah, morbid opportunist, awesome. And you know this can trigger on your opponent's turn too. It can trigger off of their creatures as well. It's not just your dudes. So awesome. Even though it doesn't trigger when it dies, who cares? Whatever. It's water under the bridge. Opportunist is still a pretty good magic card, dude. So I'm gonna give the even in non-sacrifice decks, this is pretty good because like creatures die. It's commander. People go into combat. Doesn't even have anything to do with you. <laughs> You'll draw cards. So I'm gonna give this card a six point one. Opportunist is very good. We'll move on to Colossal Might, a green and a red for an instant. A creature gets plus four, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. Originally printed in Alara Reborn and only really ever printed a couple of times since then. Um, they kind of stopped printing it after Commander 2011, surprisingly, but this is still an okay um, pump spell, right? I mean, two mana is more than you want to pay for the average pump spell. Really, you just want to pay one mana for a really, really good one. 
you know. This is probably outclassed in most cases by a card like Monstrous Rage, for instance, which is going to give the creature plus three, plus two, and trample effectively the turn that you play it, and then keep a plus one, plus one on them and the trample. Come on, dude. Like, Monstrous Rage is ridiculous when compared to something like this, but still, uh, a card like Monstrous Rage that actually gives an extra power boost is still something that you might want to consider for a deck or two here and there, but I'm not really sure what commander deck plays uh, an abundance of pump spells other than the obvious ones. Um... So, I don't know exactly what wants this or can't even play it, but just in a vacuum, fine pump spell, 4.8. Well, eh, 4.72, sure. <laughs> it's fine. But birds, it's a bop. Have I already rated this card? I think I have, um, and I think I gave it a 9, which I'll stick with. But Sky Diamond is our actual next card. Sky Diamond originally printed in Mirage over here, as, as all the diamonds were. Two mana for an artifact that enters play tapped. You can tap it to add a blue. That's what it does. So like one of the worst, you know, Moxin. <laughs> it's like a super powered down Moxin for its point in time. Um, but still okay. You know, you'll still catch cards like Diamond seeing play in Commander from time to time. But... Not super often, obviously. Uh, these are still cubable, though, for what it's worth. If you're doing, like, an old-school cube, you want to keep it relatively light on the price tag. So, what do you give diamonds? Because for the most part, you'd there are other options for two-mana rocks that you'd probably rather play in standard, or in commander, rather. But when you really get down to brass tacks, there's not that many that are better than the diamonds. But, you know, how many two-mana rocks do you need in your deck? Depends on what deck you're building, but this is always just a good utility card. Like, no matter what, it might be worth a slot in your deck. Fast mana always is. So, I'm going to give this a 5.4. Um, and when we see better rock effects, I will rate them better. Uh, fast mana is good, uh, and I probably should give this like a 5.6. I really should, because fast mana is really good, but obviously this is powered down in today's environment. You know, back in the day, I would have had to give this like a 6.4, but we've come a long way since then. But next is Boomerang, originally printed in Legends, am I correct? Yes, okay, so this is two blue mana for an instant. Return a permanent to its owner's hand. Note that it doesn't say non-land permanent. <laughs> so there's a blue-red, you know, Ponza, or land destruction for the children <laughs> back in the day. Um, why is it called Ponza? I really have no idea. <laughs> but anyway, there was a blue-red land destruction deck back in the day. Or LD, again, for the OGs. Um, where you just turn to a uh, boomerang into your opponent's turn into a turn three stone rain. And now your opponent is screwed <laughs> in terms of tempo and stuff. Um, so boomerang was a legendary card just for that deck, but it's also just a good piece of tempo. It really is. Like, even to this day, two mana for a non land permanent bounce at instant speed with no conditions or downsides, or, you know, you have to run on a hamster wheel to make it work or anything like that. You know, we've seen effects, Printed at one mana here even recently. Um, in context, Dustmorn just came out. There was a card in Bloomborough that's one mana. Uh, but you have to like gift a 1-1 one -one token to your opponent to make it Boomerang. Uh, which is good because it's half the price of a Boomerang. But Boomerang's just a clean, simple effect that still costs relatively little mana. And it is pretty blue reliant. But same time, just still a good magic card. It really is. The fact that it re returns lands is... Always better in 1v1s than it appears, but just in terms of utility, it's really good too, If you're even if you're not returning lands. And sometimes it can just mess up big plays or combat steps. And Boomerang's a tough one, man. I used to think this card was bad. This is another one that my buddy, Kevin, hey, if you're watching, Kev, what's up? Um, this is another one that he had to like teach me why the card was good. You know, you, you bang in for an attack step with your Shivan Dragon and spend all your mana on it, and he just spends two mana. Boomerang back to your hand, and it feels terrible. So learn your timing, kids, when you're learning how to play Magic the Gathering. I'm going to give this a 5.6, and I am serious. Uh, iconic effect, really good. Dr. Madison Lee is up next. What are you? This is three mana. It's, it's printed in the Fallout set. Um, Jeskai Colors. Blue, red, white for a 2-3 legendary human scientist. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you get an energy. All right. You can uh, tap her and pay an energy to have a creature get plus one, plus one. And, wow. Plus one, plus zero and gain trample and haste until end of turn. All right. You can also tap it and pay three energy to draw a card. And if you tap her and pay five energy, you return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield tap. That is, she does so much. Dude. Jeez Louise. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, get energy. 
So it's already in your energy deck. You're, building, you're making energy in other ways. And hopefully you're casting artifacts that also get you energy or something. There's a few of those, right? So, yeah, I think that, well, no haste on her or anything. So you have to wait a whole turn cycle to do something. But relatively cheap commander, you know. Good energy commander, I think. There's not a whole lot of those. So I guess, I guess you're kind of shoehorned into this one or maybe one or two other ones if you do want to build an energy deck. does give you three colors to play with, and they're all good energy colors, but no green, which I feel like is kind of lame. But still, all together, yeah, I'll take this. It's not terrible. Um, unique commander build around. Uh, pretty narrow, right? But is self-facilitating, right? Even if there's not a whole lot of other energy cards in your deck. You just fill your deck with artifacts, and you're kind of off to the races. So... Neat thing. I'll give this a 5.2, uh, mostly because of commander uniqueness. You know, I like that. But next is Snow Covered Swamp. Uh, I'm going to count this as a basic land, but I'm also going to give it a 5.1 uh, because it's slightly better in most situations than a basic land. Also, the art's good. Good job, Rob Alexander. But our actual next card is Clandestine Meddler from Murders at Karlov Manor. Three mana, two and a black for a 3-2 vampire rogue. When it ETBs, suspect up to one other target creature you control. Whenever one or more suspected creatures you control attack, surveil one. So a suspected creature has menace, but it also cannot block. So you have to suspect a dude you control, uh, but it also technically theoretically gives you a surveil every one, but you have to have every turn, but you have to have another creature in play when you play this and that creature has to live and guys, it's pretty not good. Like even in limited, it's not good. Three mana, three twos trade with two drops. It's just poop. I guess it has an ETB trigger. It makes it slightly better. And like, if you suspect your two drop, then it's going to get through for combat damage a lot more likely if you play it on curve. It's still, there are good things, but God stinker, man. I'll give this card a two. <laughs> I don't know what I gave it during the, Speed run set review, but it's it's not good. We'll move on to Homerid. <laughs> What's my favorite Homerid art? They're all good. That's, pre that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But I think the most iconic one is this guy. Because look at him. <laughs> look at him just standing there. Um, three mana, two and a blue for a 2-2 two -two from Fallen Empires. Only ever printed in Fallen Empires, but not part of the reserve list, because why would they ever reprint this? A three mana, two, two Homerid. Put a tide counter on Homerid when it's brought into play <laughs> and during your upkeep. If there is one tide counter on Homerid, it gets minus one, minus one. If there are three tide counters on Homerid, it gets plus one, plus one. Then if there are four tide counters on Homerid, remove them all. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a three mana one one actually and then next turn it's a three mana three three which back then okay all right the turn after it comes into play it attacks as a three three okay <laughs> but it's still like really terrible this man fallen empires we went into it a couple of days ago fallen empires is a, 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 a beloved set by me i love fallen empires but god did it have some stanky stankertons so i'll give this card a 1.4 it's like actively bad <laughs> so move on to the final card of the day at least we had a good laugh it's planes this is a five so it's a basic land art's pretty good too good job michael comark good little landscape there but the actual last card of the day is deep wood i think we've reviewed this card I believe we have. It's like a fog effect. Yeah, we've looked at this card before. Come on, Scryfall. Talisman of Resurgence we have not looked at. Two mana for an artifact. Tap to add a colorless. Tap, add black or green, and Talisman deals one damage to you. So you could say that this is better than diamonds, right? We just looked at diamonds. But it's not strictly better because it deals damage to you, whereas diamonds don't. So there's, you know, there's some push-pull on a card like this. Um, when were y'all originally printed? Modern Horizons appears to be the correct answer to that question. I wasn't precisely sure, but all right. Yeah, so two mana rock that deals damage to you, right? Or doesn't have to, but still produces two different colors of mana. Um, altogether solid cards. These still see a fair amount of commander play in the right decks, and they are typically better than diamonds in most game situations, if you're in two or more colors. So I'm going to give this a 5.5. .5. I think it's a pretty you know, above average magic card, but obviously a role player as well, but shows up so much that you have to respect it and give it something, right? But that is all the cards for Tuesday. Why am I talking this way? Yeah, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It is Tuesday. As far as you know, it's still Sunday for me, but that's because I live in the past. <laughs> I was going to say future and I realized it didn't make sense. I'm actually still in the past as you watch this. I'm three days ago. Um, who knows what's happened in the world by now? 
I hope this isn't an insensitive video to release. Oh, no. Oh, God, what if it is? What if it is? And then I'm just digging a hole here. Anyway, I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.